it's very evident that in your opinion, Anastasia was uh, one of the uh, highest uh, in command of, of this notorious outfit. He was entrusted with all the murders, official murders of theirs, uh, committed uh, by the Brooklyn Group, no matter uh -huh. where they were committed. Uh -huh. And over what period of time were uh, you uh, in office uh, after his indictment was returned? He was never indicted. And I mean, after the after the action was taken or the investigation was made. I was two and a half years in office, but uh, it could have possibly been many months less than that before we thoroughly understood mm -hmm. the picture. Well, well, the the question that possibly might occur to the minds uh, of some is whether or not there is any explanation. Uh, for the fact that uh, proceedings were not pursued uh, uh, prior to your leaving the office uh, with the knowledge that you had against him. Yes, sir. There's a very good explanation of that. There's a factual explanation. The facts speak for themselves. One of the first things that happened when this investigation broke and uh, the underworld knew that it was... Uh, intended to go all the way as far as it could go was that two men, Anastasio and a man named Parisi, uh, went into hiding. And we were never able to find them. Now, if you'll remember the principle of law involved in this state, where on the unsubstantiated statement of a co-conspirator, you can't possibly get a good indictment. They dismissed the indictment. They did it in the Nitzberg case, after the second or possibly the third trial. The Court of Appeals is very suspicious in this state of any conviction. And that goes especially for a death sentence on the unconfirmed statement of a co-conspirator. Now, if you'll realize that the higher you went, the further away from independent proof you went. And in the case of Anastasia, there was never, except in one case, where we could actually get him in as uh, uh, with an indictment that would stand up. And that was the case of the murder of Diamond. Now, Anastasia was out in hiding, and the co-defendant in that very case was in hiding, Parisi. There were two witnesses that were independent. One was a small boy who was reported to me as delicate and I think had some trouble with one eye. He was apparently sitting on a stoop very early in the morning when Mr. old Mr. Diamond was going to work in the middle of the block and Parisi shot him, killed him. Now the story was told by Rellies that in this one case, Rellies was not a co-conspirator. And the story was told by the driver of the murder car, and don't pin me down to which one that was, it possibly Catalano or possibly uh, Tannenbaum, but the record would show it, that Anastasia not only arranged the details of the crime, but that he had a conversation in his home in the presence of Rellies, I think it was with Tannenbaum, in which he chided him for not getting busy on the diamond case and killing him. And there was some evidence uh, afterwards there, I'm not clear what it was, but Rellies was the one and only one who was not concerned with the crime who said that uh, Anastasia was in a car not in the middle of the block where it happened, but at the corner, some distance away. Now, I've said that that was a perfect case. Senator, a perfect case to me means a perfect indictment case. Well, you said you didn't test for an indictment with no expectation of being able to prosecute successfully, would you? Oh, no. 
I'd tend to do it, but I wouldn't say what a jury, a trial jury would do. I don't think any lawyer of any experience would ever say that. I was satisfied that if the indictment came out, that that's one part of it. The next is the trial part of it. And of course, much more investigation between uh, the time of trial when you get down to prepare it. Well, Mr. Uh, Ambassador, uh, with the uh, knowledge or the belief on your part that you had a perfect case for indictment, did you pursue steps to get the indictment? No, sir. And why? Well, number one, it was all right to take grown-ups and throw them in as material witnesses. That you could do. They knew how to protect themselves. In the case of this little boy, if we were to take him in, first of all, he was delicate. Secondly, the danger of these gangsters threatening his father and mother. It was, in my opinion, not a good thing to put this case to the grand jury until until I knew that I had Anastasio and, if possible, <coughs> Parisi. Another thing, it was very important to get the two of them. Any prosecutor that says that he'd prefer <coughs> where there were two men concerned in a crime to uh, Indict one now and try him, and indict another again, and have all your witnesses subject to two cross examinations just doesn't know what he's talking about. And I felt at the time, since we were very busy with the cases that we had, and believe me. Well, you certainly weren't uh, busy with anything as important as the Anastasia case, yes, though, were you? Sir, I was busy with murder cases that I had. I mean, but from your description of Anastasia, we, we uh, have the opinion that, that you did consider him. Uh, of course, one of the worst culprits well, in, in America. I've said so. I've said so over and over again, the public press for a grand jury. But while you're waiting to get him, you don't stop prosecution of, of murders, of, of other murders that are ready to proceed in your office. Yes, sir. Mr. Witness, when did the Anastasia case, which made you call brought you the comment to get a perfect case against him for murder in the first degree, when did the perfect case become an imperfect case, and how? When Raleigh's died. When Raleigh's died. And uh, he was the only witness that you needed to confirm somebody's else's testimony. The only witness that I had. Only had. That was independent proof. I see. So when Raleigh's death was done, <coughs> when Raleigh's passed on, uh, then you lost the most valuable witness you could have to get a, a conviction of Anastasia. Is that right? That is right. Therefore... That, that didn't mean that there wasn't no other evidence somewhere Yes, I around. understand. But didn't your mind, or did your mind, then turn upon the cause celebre and wonder <coughs> who were the uh, accessories either before or after the fact that made Relish pop this light? And on that basis, I might add before you answer it, opinions differ so from the important witnesses as to how Mr. Relish departed this life and why. You have one opinion, I have another. And Mr. Balls had two or three, as expressed at different times. And, but we know he's dead. Now, therefore, wasn't that worth the greatest endeavor in the world to find out who was culpable in reducing this man Rullis to a corpse so the evidence is out the window and you can't prosecute the mad arch criminal Anastasia? How much of a trial and hearing did you have on these fellows that, that had charge of Rullis, these six noted policemen that are very fond of Morpheus and so forth? I, Senator, I knew at the time what the medical examiner said. I knew what he said was the cause of death. What was that? Fall. Fall. Did, uh, was, did you see the body? No, sir. Were there any marks on it, to your knowledge, either bullet shots or stabs in the dark? Why, the medical examiners are proof of that. Yeah. Did anybody testify to besides the medical examiner? No, sir. Uh, on, on, as to that, I'd say no. No, Don't I'm the police sure. usually go and look at a corpse after the medical examiner while he's examining it? I've been 40 years in this city, and I never did see the police or anyone else do anything but identify the body 
And the responsibility for stating the cause of death is only on one man. So that. The medical examiner. If my body's found out here in Foley Square, all clothed, and I'm taken to the morgue, and the police suspect that some of these gangsters murdered Charles Toby, then all that would happen would be the morgue would have my body, the medical examiner examine it, and certify death by such and such a thing. But no member of the police or detective squad will be there to confirm the site of the body and whether or not possibly some other cause of death than merely falling out of a car. Is that right? They wouldn't be qualified to testify to the cause of death. They can qualify whether the appearance of the body was on they, the body's photograph? They usually, certainly. They usually do that. Was really the body's photograph? That I won't swear to, but the Homicide Bureau photographs everybody. This is John Tillman again. The film sequence which you've just seen was taken on the afternoon of March 19th when former Mayor William O'Dwyer was discussing Murder Incorporated. We hope that it's enabled you to recapture the dramatic impact it had on New York and the nation. And now let's see what several well-known television authorities had to say about WPIX's handling of these hearings. Jack Gould of the New York Times. Station WPIX, which does deserve great credit for the coverage which it supplied the whole TV industry, wisely just kept the cameras focused on the scene in the hearing room, and for minutes at a time, said nothing. Jack O'Brien of the New York Journal American said, the television arrangements were made months ago by WPIX. The Associated Press, the calculation was made by the New York news station WPIX, which is originating the telecasts. The Chicago Tribune, three months of planning and preparatory work by officials of the New York Daily News television station WPIX preceded the dramatic hearings. Jerry Franken of Billboard magazine, no event TV has yet covered presented drama on so high a scale. Even more important, television met the challenge. Under the guidance of John McClay and Ted Estabrook of WPIX, TV did a superb job in bringing the events to millions of viewers. The New York Herald Tribune. For the record, the spade work on what may prove to be television's outstanding feature to date, the Kefauver crime hearings, was done by the staff of station WPIX. And these are just a few of the tributes from the press.